Typically, I don't see sick people going to other sick people saying, How do you, you know, you got this cold. How do I get over it? Man, I got the same thing. Ah. Right? So, so when we talk about these biggest, the only way biggest get better is to be with better people. The only way to, 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 uh, to get prejudiced people to think differently is that we have to have people who are able to give them cognitive dissonance, right? Somebody who's able to, to stand up and say, where did you get those facts? How, how do you know that to be true, right? Um, and all too often we'd like to preach and, 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 um, and you know, uh, villainize these folks. And then we keep ending up with this. And we keep saying, well, why, you know, after all of these years of doing this stuff, why are we still coming up with this? It's because we haven't dealt with these two, the, the first two. So, cool. Thank you. Um, and so when, when we talk about uh, the bigots and the prejudice and even the people who are acting discriminatory, one of the things we have to remember is that they're all reaching for the same goals. We want the same goals. And we all want a sense of significance, belonging, and safety. That's what we want. Why do, why do people come to this school? So that it can expand their ability to be significant, belonging, and have a sense of financial or, uh, or, or cultural safety that, that a job provides you, right? And so uh, if I have a Somali student who just came from, from a camp, right? Or lives in South Minneapolis. What does that student want? He wants significance, belonging, and safety. If I have a, a kid from Chicago, what does he want? He wants significance, belonging, and safety. Uh, if I have a kid from greater Minnesota, from Bram, Minnesota, who comes into the school, what does he want? Significance, belonging, and safety. Where we typically have problems isn't with the, what these goals are. We typically have problems because we don't understand how people are trying to get those things, or that the ways that they're trying to get them are inappropriate for our cultural setting or for our environment. And so we have to teach people with this understanding that what they're doing is what they, in some ways, know to do. Right? So if you can open up your, um, your handout, and I want to, uh, I like to point out to you the truths about human beings, right? So um, humans can learn, change, and grow, right? Who I was at 17 is not who I am today. Thank God, right? <laughs> so we can learn, change, and grow. We can adapt to our environment. We can uh, use new tools. So we're, we're, we're flexible in that way. Um, people also do what they think works even when what? It doesn't. Even when it doesn't work, they still do it because they think that it works. Right? Um, all human behavior is goal-directed. Everything that we do is because we, we, we were, we're trying to achieve some kind of goal or we think we're going to get some reward from doing it. Right? So people come to class late because they think they're getting some kind of reward from doing that. Right? So the thing that they were doing before class was more important than the thing that they were doing to, to get to class, right? So, um, so that's something that we have to, to also understand because goal orientation allows us to, to actually be able to change or help people change their behavior, right? Uh, next, attitude is a reaction to a goal. What have you been taught about what an attitude is? What is an attitude? Mindset. It's a mindset. Attitude. The way you think or feel about something. The way you think or feel about something is an attitude. Anyone been accused of having an attitude? <laughs> right. So my uh, my dad was my pastor, and um, and so growing up, I was a preacher's kid, right? And so we would uh, on Sunday we would open up the church at seven thirty a.m. and we close the church at eleven thirty p.m. We stop at 3 o'clock for chicken, not because we were black, but because chicken is delicious. So all day church on Sunday. So Friday night, I asked my dad for the car. And because my dad loves me, what does he say? No. He says, yes, he loves me. <laughs> right? So he tosses me the keys. I'm hanging out with my friends. And um, I put gas in the car, and I come home before curfew. I toss my dad the keys, and he says that I have what kind of an attitude? What kind of attitude? Great. A great attitude, a good attitude, right? What do I say about my dad's attitude? 
that he has a good attitude. So uh, I'm cool, my dad is cool. <coughs> Friday night. Sunday at noon, my best friend Dexter calls me and says, Andre, can you pick me up for the movies? What do I know about Sundays? Church. church all day. But I'm 17 and I'm invincible. <laughs> and Jesus is my friend, right? So I go up to my dad and I say, Dad, can I borrow the car? And what does my dad say? He says no. And not only does he say no, but he gives me a lecture about how I'm leading people to hell. Right? Every negative consequence in my house, the ultimate consequence was hell. You didn't make your bed, you're going to hell. You didn't wash the dishes, you're going to hell. And my parents were very happy to either show you the way or you could go on your own. <laughs> right? So I would say that my dad had what kind of an attitude because he did not let me use the car. I would say he had a bad attitude. What would he then say about my attitude? Bad. That I also had a bad attitude. But wait a minute, Friday night we were cool. Sunday, now we both have attitudes. Just on Sunday, you don't have an attitude. <laughs> she said just, just on, on Sunday, Sundays, right? So what's the difference? What happened? Disagreed. What's that? We disagreed. We disagreed with what? Each other. With each other. Now this, if, if you want to be effective with students, this is probably the most impactful statement that I can make the whole time that we're spending together. Right? Because this will help you figure out every last student that you interact with. This is the, the golden key or silver bullet, as it would be, to let you into the mind, minds of your students. The reason, okay, so, so here I'll give you one example closer to, to home for you. Have you ever been in a, in a situation where you, um, you were a, a teen yourself and you asked a parent, for something, and they denied you that something, right? Your typical response, at least the, the response that I've often seen, is this one. <laughs> right? All that kind of stuff. Sighing, hissing, you know, booing. And then all of a sudden, the, the parent gets this, 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 um, this clairvoyant idea that, you know, they, they, they just tap into the universe um, and into your desires, and they say, you know what, I'm thinking about that. No, go ahead and do it. And you're like... <gasps> Oh, oh, thank you, right? You start purring, and, you know, you want to rub up next to them, and go, I love you, right? Now, two seconds ago, you hated these people, now you love them. Why? If you want to understand our students, and you want to understand their attitudes, it's important to realize what their goals are. When I accomplish my goal, I have a good attitude. When I'm not able to reach my goal, I have a bad or negative attitude. And so you have, you're, you're sitting in your, your office or you're, you're trying to register a, a, a student or you're trying to even get folks to, 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 to sign up for school and they have a bad attitude. What is the one thing that you know about them for sure? That what? They have goals. That they have goals? But if they have a bad attitude, what do I know? You're not They're not getting their goal. So as a, as a person who is a, a helper to the student, I now have a twofold responsibility to them. What's the easiest thing for me to do to help them have a good attitude? Ask them, ask them what they want. I can ask, can I use the bathroom? Is that getting me to the bathroom? No. So not asking what, them what they want. Understanding their goals. So I can understand. Oh, yes, I understand. Give them what they want. You got to have a good attitude. If they got a bad attitude, you got to have a good attitude towards them so they can embrace. What determines an attitude? That conflict of, am I going to get what I want? Is it the conflict? <clears throat> if I get what I want, I have a... Good attitude. If I don't get a, what I want, I have a bad attitude. Following that logic, if I have a bad attitude and you want to get me a good attitude, then you need to get me what? What, you want. what I want. So if you have a student who, who has a bad attitude, the, the best way to help them get 
a good attitude is to help them get their goal, help them reach their goal. Now, what if you have a student whose goal is so obtuse, we don't have the resources for that, they don't have the capacity to actually do it, um, and it's not something that's within the realm of possibilities, right? Um, so a student comes here and says, I want to be an astrophysicist through your program. Is that going to happen? No, it's not going to happen. It's not possible. We don't have the resources for that, right? So then what becomes my responsibility to the student? Explain why we can. <laughs> okay, you can explain why. And now I'm still saying, but I, I want to. I, I want to do it. I can do it. And you're saying, I, I'm going to explain to you why, blah, 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 blah. Options. What about options? Well, if you don't have it within you, then you let them know what their options are. So that they can do what with that information? change their goal. They change their goal, right? So if you have a student who is, um, who, ha who has some, some ideas, some thoughts of, of things that they can't do themselves, it's easy as, as bureaucrats for us to say, nope, can't do it, T check. And then we, the, the bad attitude that they had when they came is the same bad attitude that they left, except that the name for that bad attitude they have is your last name. <laughs> right? And so um, it's important to encourage people to make their own decisions. And so all we do is provide pe people information. So if you want to help someone and they have a, a, a bad attitude, first, get them what they want. And secondly, help them set new goals. My parents would say that all the time. They'd be like, um, you know, boy, go to your room till you learn how to act. And I'd be in my room for a while, and then I'd step out and I'd say, to be or not to be. I spent a lot of time in my room. Right? <laughs> That's not what they were talking about. What they were talking about was, uh, son, you need to change your goals because you're not using the car on Sunday because we've got to drop people off at home. We've got to pick people up for the evening service. There are responsibilities that we have to have that, that you have to participate. So you need to change your goal. And until I was able to figure that part out, I was really frustrated with my parents. But luckily, I was able to figure it out. And you can figure that out with your, with your students. Um, it's great to know what their goals are, uh, but it's more important to help them fulfill them and to help them change them or augment them when it's necessary, right? Um, so, um, Typically, when we've talked about uh, diversity, we, we've talked about political correctness. We, we talked about that a little bit. Um, also, we, we typically end up talking about things in terms of black and white, uh, in terms of absolutes, as well as the racial construct. Like, there are no other people involved in, in diversity conversations. Um, diversity is also uh, typically, uh, in, its, in its classical form, has been talked about in terms of blame, guilt, and fault, that white people are to blame, and that people of color are faultless and guiltless. We are, we are noble for suffering all the bad white people, right? But I want you to think about anything about a, 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 a cultural group, right? So all the stereotypes, all the bad stuff that people might say about a cultural group that is different from you. Think about all that bad stuff. Now I want you to think about your own family. Those things that they say about other cultural groups, can you say those kinds of things about your family? For example, all those people steal. Do you have a thief in your family? They're, those people are drunks. You know, uh, the, the, the whole group of them. You got at least one drunk in your, your family, right? So everything that we can say about another group, we can also apply to, to our own group. And so uh, it's important to, to think outside of that box. Sometimes uh, diversity trainings turn into therapy sessions where whoever cries or has the worst story is the winner, right? Um, if you want therapy, I have office hours for that, and I only charge $200 an hour. Right? Um, it's also not about meritocracy, and meritocracy is that concept that if you work hard enough, you can be just like me. What's the problem with this concept of meritocracy? If you work hard enough, you can be just like me. What if you don't want to be like me, right? I mean, it would be a shame for LeBron James to have to play basketball the way I do, right? That would be a shame, right? 
Um, and also, 